Hi, in this video we're going to understand one of the options called smart identification. This is one of the object identification method. Let's understand this particular option with the help of one of the scenarios. This is the real time scenarios. Let's say we recorded UFT on this web based application. We recorded this particular form over here. And while recording the name of the element, name property of an element was your name. But after recording test case, web designer changed the name property of this element from your name to name. As we understand, it will execute UFT's recording on this particular web application. It will fail because in UFT name property of this element is your name and on actual application it is name. If the smart identification is not enabled, it will search for all the properties which it captured, which are the mandatory properties, which UFT remembers. But let's say if I have enabled smart identification, UFT will ignore the properties which are not matching and will switch to other properties. It will keep on moving to other properties till the time it will not find something which is matching. So in this case, probability of UFT recording failure is very low. Because we have enabled smart identification, it will keep on checking for other properties till the time it will not match the property. So how to enable it? Let's see that. First of all, mandatory point is we must enable smart identification before adding the elements or objects. So how to add that? We'll go to tools option. Go to object identification. Here you will see smart identification. First of all, we'll choose the environment. If I'm testing web based application, I'll choose web. Let's say I want to set this identification for button. I'll choose web button and look at this. These are the mandatory properties. That means whenever UFT will record, UFT will record these mandatory properties. If these properties will fail, it will go for these two. But if both of them fails, it's not going to give you any option and it will fail. But if you will enable smart identification here, you can go for configure and you get two options base filter properties and optional filter properties. These are the properties which will never change like HTML tag. HTML tag for any link cannot change. If it changed, then it is not link anymore. If let's say these properties also get failed, then it will go for this optional filter properties. And this is how you can implement smart identification. You can add or remove from here if you want to. These are the options. If let's say I want to add few more properties, I have list over here. We can add properties from here. So we can add or remove properties over here also. Let's say I want to add some properties which are not listed over here. So if I want to add some properties in base filter properties, always keep in mind that it should not be listed here because anyhow, these properties will work if your base filter fails. So let's say if HTML tag fails, it will go for name, type, HTML ID, value, class, visible, ECC name. This is how smart identification works. So there are no chances that UFT script will fail in this case because in this case UFT is looking for other properties too instead of mandatory properties. That is how we can use smart identification. So we'll click on OK and now if we'll record web based application and execute it at runtime UFT will switch to smart identification if any of the properties fails. So guys this is what smart identification is. Thanks for now.